For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. For a few moments on this morning, I would just like to take time to encourage each and every one that's under the sound of my voice on this topic, on this subject, building stronger faith, building stronger faith. Hebrews chapter 11 is known as the hall of faith, and it describes the faith of people that receive the promise without having the assurance of the promise. Meaning they heard testimonies and they heard the word of God and they heard God himself speak and promised them blessings that they would not have enough room to receive it. Promised them inheritance uh, that they could not see or imagine. Promised them things that they could not even, uh, that was blowing their minds and they were able to receive the promise because they walked by faith and not by sight. It's amazing to me that we as believers We assume that everyone understands what faith is because if you actually talk to people that you don't know or that don't believe in God and don't have the faith that we have, they wonder why or how do we have the faith that we have. And so Hebrews chapter 11 is a great way for us to outline or to describe what faith is. But before I just go into that, I want to go through some points. As we go through our scripture text on this morning, we've been talking about faith. James talked about with uh, faith without works is dead. He talked about that your faith has to have works. It has to have some actions. Um, but how, how do we obtain faith? Because I need us to understand that we're living uh, in a day and time where our faith is being challenged. I don't know about you, but it seems like uh, the weapons that the enemy is forming, it appears that they are prospering. And so God God wanted us to know that in spite of what you are seeing, you've got to continue to walk by faith and not by sight. That means that you have to continue to believe on something that you may not see the results of or be able to see the fruit of it, but you got to be able to stand on what you hear. I'm getting ahead of myself um, because what's going on is that what's, in, what's going on during this day and time is the very time that if the very elect don't hold on to God, then the very elect are going to be the ones that are going to be swept away by the things that are going on in this world. Who would have ever thought that this pandemic would be lasting this long? Uh, but it's just getting started. If you are looking at anything in the news, it's starting to ramp itself up even more because we're not heeding the calls um, that should be, be that should be put out. That we're not getting the messages that need to be put out. But people are still walking around doing the same old stuff that they were doing before the pandemic. And this pandemic has caused us to do a change in in normal. We can't do things as we used to do them. What's normal is no longer normal. So that means that you got to change. But we're a people that don't like to change. We don't like to change. And so our faith is being challenged. I'm praying that God will keep. I'm praying that God will open up the door. Uh, But it doesn't seem like it's going to happen. I just talked to a young man the other day. Uh, God blessed him to be able to purchase a house a couple of months ago. Uh, But I just found out last month he lost his job. He was laid off from work. And I had to remind him that it's just a challenge of your faith. That if God put you in the place and God is the one that made the way, and then God is not going to allow you to drop out of the place in spite of what it may look like and might in spite of what may be going on we're living in a day and time that we have to hold fast to the profession of our faith and so how do we obtain faith come on with me you are, are going to walk with me through the word of god i may not preach as hard as i normally preach um, but we're going to walk through what is faith because faith is the substance of things hoped for but what is it that i'm having or i need to have faith in so that i can have the substance of the things that i'm hoping for and find out that i have evidence in something that i have not seen quickly go with me to uh, romans skip over go with me to Romans chapter 10. Romans is an awesome book that always, uh, we used to, as a kid, we used to do the Romans road when we used to go out witnessing. We would go out witnessing and we would go through Romans 3 and 10 and Romans 3 and 23, uh, Romans 5 and 8, Romans 6 and 23. We would use John 3, 16. Then we would skip back down to uh, up to Romans 10 
And when we go through these scriptures, because it walks us through how we can obtain salvation. But let's look at this. I, I want to, we're building, uh, we're building stronger faith. That's what we're looking to do. And, and, and let, me, let me give you this baseline as you go to Romans 10 and 10. You have to work your faith. You have to build your faith because anything that you don't invest time into and anything you don't make a, a, a primary, a, a give primary attention to, then it becomes lackadaisical. It becomes weak. It becomes uh, not as strong as it could if you would invest more time into it. And let me give you an example. Um, during this pandemic, we've been quarantined. We have not been able to get to the places and do the things that we would normally do. And so if you're just sitting at home doing nothing, then guess what's happened? You're sitting at home doing nothing. Your body is becoming a little weak and it's not as strong as it used to be. Uh, you're becoming a little bit more lazy. Uh, you're becoming a little bit more content. You like to eat a little bit more than you would normally eat because you're sitting at home doing nothing. And so I made up in my mind uh, a couple of months ago uh, that I was going to start walking. And it just so happened that when I started walking a couple of weeks later, uh, Brother uh, 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 Pio told me, Pastor, you need to be working out because, you know, you work so hard. I need to make sure you're doing it. I said, Brother, thank you for covering me because that's what I've been doing. And little did I know that the more that I push, the more that I can go. My, I used to walk, and I used to walk real slow, but I can't walk as slow as Lady Yo. I, I can't because my legs are longer, and then I, it, 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 I don't sweat when I walk with her. I, I'm not tired. I just don't sweat when I walk on this. So I go walking at a different time. And my walking my miles used to be around 14 15 minutes a walk a slight jog but brother Pyle, i'm down to 11 minutes and 45 seconds in my miles walking because i'm consistent and i'm pushing myself every single day so that i can grow stronger and i can keep moving and my bones still feel the same but i know that i'm stronger because i know that i'm investing in something that i'm getting a result out of that's how our faith has to be as well we can just say i'm healthy and I used to have faith and I had faith when I first believed and that faith should be good enough but your faith grows by working your faith your faith grows by investing in your faith your faith grows um, by putting some effort into it so that you can get the results that you are looking for how do we obtain faith come on go with me to Romans chapter 10 Verse 9, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You all got to understand that faith is not something that we are born with, but it's something that we have to nurture. It's something that we have to put effort in so that it will grow. It has to be learned. Faith has to be learned. And then once faith is learned, it has to be proven. All right. It has to be proven. So Paul takes us through the process of salvation. First way for us to get faith is that we confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus. That means that it's not about us. That means that your faith has to be in someone else besides you. If your faith is in you, then your faith is going to be short lived. Because I don't know about you all, but I fail myself on many occasions. I, I fail myself. I tell myself that I shouldn't have done this or I shouldn't have done that. And I knew that I shouldn't have done it. And I knew that I shouldn't have gone there. Or I knew that so myself, depending on myself, is a bad is a bad charge. Uh, because I'm always going to end up failing myself. But my faith is in the one who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I can ever ask or think. My faith is the one that woke me up this morning and started me on my way. My faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ who took my place on Calvary when Romans 6 and 23 says the wages of my sins should have resulted in death. So the first thing for us to obtain faith is that we got to understand that it's not about us. It can't be about you. And though, in, and though you are inferior, the God that's in you can make you great. Though you may be inconsequential or insignificant, the God in you can make you into something that's great. If any man be in Christ, uh, 2 Corinthians, I believe, 5 and 17, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become as new. Don't leave Romans 10. All things are become as new. So the first thing you got to do to obtain 
salvation is is confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. But then you've got to take it a step further and you've got to put some action with it. Then it takes us into verse 10. It says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So when I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart, then now I have something that I can believe upon. If I don't confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, then my belief is in vain because my belief has to be founded that he alone is God, that he alone is king, that he alone is Lord, that he is the one that died on Calvary's cross for the remission of my sins. I want you all to understand you may have heard this before, but God has given this for a reason. And sometimes we got to go back over the basics so that we can build on our most holy faith. Yes, you may have heard this before, and yes, you may have confessed, but sometimes the devil creep in unaware, and he seals in little doubts and, t- and put in little seeds of uh, discomfort and other things that causes us not to be as effective and not to be as strong as we should be. So we must confess with our mouth and then believe in our heart. But then go down to verse number 13. After we confess with our mouth and then we believe in our heart, then verse 13 in Romans 10 and 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So when I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart, then I can be saved, and I'm saved by the Lord God that's almighty. All right? So that takes us into those two steps on how we obtain faith. But then it takes us a little bit further. And I wanted to give you some background before I give you what our faith is. It says in verse 14, it says, well, how then shall they call? Because if they don't know who to call, how do they know who to call? So how do they call on him who they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom who they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Verse 15, and how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Skip down to verse number 17. So then faith cometh by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. So your faith has to be based on the mouth confession that you made. And when you, any of you all have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you confess that he is Lord. That's how you, I confess my faults, I confess my sins, and that's what your faith is based on. Your faith is based on that God came into your life and changed your life and began to do a new thing on your behalf. So that gives us the foundation of how we grow or begin our faith. We have faith in God that he can save us. We have faith in God that he can turn our lives around. We have faith in God that he can do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. We have faith that he can come in and turn our lives around. And I don't know about you, it was a leap of faith when I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior because I don't know about you, but I was a sin. I was a wretch undone. I did not deserve God's grace. I did not deserve God's mercy. So for me, to believe that someone can wash me of the sins that I had had to be something that was great faith Uh, because many threw me away. Many turned their backs on me. Many told them that I would never be good for nothing. You're going to be just like your daddy. You're going to be just like such and such. But God saw something inside of me and God turned my life around because I told God that I believe that you can and I believe that you will turn my life around. Look at this. Go with me now to Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 through 9. So we obtain faith by believing God and we grow our faith. We build our faith by believing or hearing the word of God. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 through 9. How do we obtain faith? We we obtain faith by confessing with our mouths, believing with our hearts, and then calling upon the name of the Lord. And then we learn more about how we have our faith is by hearing the word of God. And then as we begin to dig into the word of God, the word of God begins to tell us and show us how we can grow or build on our most holy faith. Look at verse number 8 in Ephesians chapter 2. It says, for by grace are ye saved through faith. I gave you the baseline, right? You confess with your mouth. The Lord Jesus, he didn't have to accept your confession, but he did. So Ephesians 2 and 8 says, it's by grace that we are saved and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. 
So it's nothing that you can do to get yourself saved. Some of y'all have said before, I'm not going to go to church until I get right. Don't even raise your hands. I'm going to be the representative of everybody. When I get right, I'm going to go back to church. I'm going to make sure. And it was years before I thought that I would ever make it to church, and I still wasn't right when I finally got to church. Great, great, great God, thank you, God, today that you didn't wait until I got right. Because if he had waited until I got right, y'all, I still would not be in church today. But because of his mercy, because his mercy is everlasting and his truth endured through all generations, I'm standing here today. It is a gift of God that we can stand on his mo our most holy faith, believing in him. But look at what verse 10 says. It says, for we, excuse me, go verse 8. It says, not of works, so you can't work your way into faith. You can't work your way into salvation. You can't work your way into the grace of God. You have to, it's, you got to surrender to the spirit of God and the spirit of God is what's going to have to change and work inside of you to provoke the good work that God has ordained for your life. So not of works, lest any man should boast. If it was you that saved you, you would tell everybody it was me. When I used to be able to try to dunk and I used to be able to get, it was me that did it. It wasn't anything else that did it. If I caught an interception or ran for a touchdown, uh, it wasn't nobody else that did it. It was me that did it. But if but salvation wasn't that way. It wasn't on my good looks. It wasn't on my stature. It wasn't on what I had in my pocket because I failed on many of those things. But it was because of the grace of God that we are standing here today. Look at verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So we were ordained for this calling. So stop beating yourself up. If, you, if you've been out of church for a little while and you have been out of church for a little while and you, you, you look back at it now and say, I can't believe that I did that. And, and all, Stop beating up yourself. God, is as long as you got the message at some point in time before you stop breathing, God is pleased with you and God is satisfied that you are here and God has great plans for your life. Go with me to Romans 5. We're going to look at verses 1 through 2. I'm talking about how do we obtain faith. We obtain faith because it's by grace that we are saved, but it's through our faith that we get access to the salvation that God has for us. Look at Romans chapter 5 verses 1 and 2. It says, therefore being justified by faith. So your faith is what justifies you. You don't, you're not justified by people's comments. You're not justified by how you look or what you wear. You're not justified because you got on a long dress, but you are justified by faith. And because we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So we are saved by faith, we're justified by faith, and we have access to grace by our faith. But I need you all to understand that's how we obtain faith. But faith is not illogical. It's not an illogical or blind acceptance of what we're hearing. Faith has substance, but we must understand that we don't control our faith. We don't control our lives, excuse me. We control our faith, but we don't control our lives. And I don't know about you, but I, I don't always understand the plans of God. I would have never imagined that God would move me to Virginia. I thought everything was hunky-dory perfect in California. But God's plans and God's thoughts are far above my plans and my thoughts. And his ways are far above my ways. So that means that even when we don't understand what God is doing, we still got to keep on walking. I don't know about you, but I, I thought sometimes that I don't want to keep walking. I don't want to keep pressing. I don't want to keep fighting because it seems like my fighting and my pressing and all of my work and my labor has been in vain but we have to keep holding on we have to keep pressing on we have to keep fighting on because there's something about our faith go back to our scripture text on this morning in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 it's not a blind acceptance but what I believe God to be doing there is substance in what I believe I'm not believing in a fairy tale I'm not believing in someone I cannot see I'm not believing in someone I cannot hear 
earth, but the substance that I have is that I have a conversation with God and that God has begun to work a change in me that I never could change on my own. Faith is the substance of things that hope for, the evidence of things not seen. Are you still acting the way that you used to act back in the day? Are you still holding on to the irrits, I mean, the hindrances and the, and, the, and the sinful life that you're doing? If God has provoked any type of change in you, then you're the substance. You are the results of faith. You're the results of your prayers that God changed me. God strengthened me. God breathed life into me. God work on me. God have mercy upon me. God show me a better way because as much as your flesh wants to do good things, there's a war going in your flesh that always goes up against God. The Bible tells us in Romans 7 and Romans 8 uh, that the flesh cannot comprehend the things of the spirit nor the spirit can do deal with the things that are in the flesh because they're in two different realms. So you can't save yourself. You can't clean yourself up. You can't make yourself better. You can't make yourself right but it's only by the grace of God. So if you see change that's God working inside of you. That's God working inside of you, counteracting, contradicting what the flesh is telling you to do. Your flesh tells you to cuss somebody out. It tells you in a real quick minute, oh, God, even if you ain't cursed in a long time, it will tell you to slap somebody upside the head and give them a mouthful of stuff because people do dumb stuff. Don't frown at me, Missionary Miller. That flesh will tell you to do that. That flesh will tell you to do that. You may not have cursed in years. And then you walk into the supermarket, and then you hear something going on. And then that devil puts something in your ear. Uh, have you ever found yourself going through the supermarket, and your old jam came on, and you thought, oh, oh let me not get y'all in trouble. Lady, yo, get me all the time. She said, Pastor, you can't do that. And my flesh dwelleth no good thing. I'm, I'm, I'm human just like y'all. I got the battle and war against my flesh as well. So the substance is the substance of things hoped for. So we can't... Uh, we can't allow what we see to deceive us. You can't allow what you see to deceive you because that's what the devil wants you to rely upon. You got to tell God, God, give me spiritual eyes that I may see what you want me to see and that I may not see what my flesh wants to see because my flesh sees sickness. My flesh sees death. My flesh sees frustration. My flesh sees carnality. My flesh sees things that I should not see. But the spirit man tells me that there's greater for me than that there is against me. Any weapon that the enemy forms against me can't prosper, even though it may seem like they are prospering. Don't walk by what you see, but walk by what you know. That takes me to 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We have to have faith that God knows what he is doing. You got to have faith that God knows what he is doing. Because if you take time to look back over your life, there's some events that occurred that you really don't know how you got out of. That you really don't know how you made your way through it. How you actually have all of the limbs that you have. I, te I testified before about you all. Uh, in college, I used to drink. But I never drunk and draw. I, mean, I never drank and, draw and drove. I didn't drink and drive. That sounds better. It just don't sound right to me. But one time I did drink and drive. And I walked and I drove across a busy street and I do not remember how I got across the street at all. And it was a busy street all the time. No matter what time of day or night it was, there was always cars driving by. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that I did not stop at the stop sign. But I made it through the light and it was only by the grace of God. So I know that God has had his hand on me. So we can't go by what we see, but we got to know that God knows what he is doing. So you got to hold. You got to hold on. You can't let go. You got to hold on. And that's what these saints in, in Hebrews chapter 11, they held on to what they believe and what they were told without even having the assurance of the promise. It says Abel, verse 4, by Abel, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. He offered a sacrifice but didn't have assurance that his sacrifice was the right sacrifice. But he gave God what God asked 
4, so he gave God a perfect sacrifice. By faith, Enoch, he was translated that he should not see death. He had an uneasy journey because he walked so that God translated him and he never saw death. Oh, God, today. Oh, God, today. He did. He had a walk that God was pleased with. He had a walk that God was pleased with. And we've got to understand that we can have that same type of walk as well. That we don't have to just talk about other people that are on the wall, but that we can be those, those believers, those saints, those hall of faith, uh, that we can walk by faith and not by sight. So we learn how to obtain faith. We get faith by believing in God. We obtain faith by believing in the God that can do anything but fail. But when we believe, we don't believe illogically. But we have substance. We see the result of our faith. We see the result of the change that God has been performing in our lives. We see the results and we have substance by what God does. You know, people say that they don't believe in God because uh, uh, the things just don't line up. But do you all know that science, that science even uh, uh, acknowledges that God is God? That there had to be a God that created the heavens and the earth? Uh, because things don't, you just don't, a big bang cannot, let me not get into that, but a big bang cannot have put all this in the place because otherwise we would have had another big bang and we would have been gone by now but our faith has substance because we see what we see in the word of God I love it when Bishop, um, Bishop Brown comes over Bishop Brown is a prophet that talks about the end times and he goes through the Bible and shows us on how what we're dealing with today is actually already in the Bible that the things that we see going on, the wars and rumors of wars, um, we talked about last week about how men would be lovers of themselves and do those things. Those things were living in those days and times now. And the word of God was written years ago. So we have substance on what we believe. When people tell you, why do you believe in a God you cannot see? It's the, you don't need, I don't need to see him. But what I know is that the sun is still rotating. Every single morning, the sun still rises. That's substance of what I believe in. The moon comes up in the nighttime to give us light during the nighttime. The birds of the fowl and air are still singing his praises. The animals, we have substance in what we believe because we can see the results of his word. We can see the results of his word. And so after we hear, we have to act upon what we hear. Go with me to James 1 and 22, and then we'll skip over to James 2 and 17. It said, James encouraged us to be doers of the word and not hearers only. So our faith is only strengthened. Our faith is only built up is if we begin to act on what we believe. We act on what we believe. If you never act on what you believe, then your faith cannot be strengthened and it cannot be encouraged. James 1 and 22 says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. If you come to church and you don't get, get something that will grab you or that you can hold on to, then the Bible says that you are deceiving yourself. Because every time we got a word from the Lord, whether you think it's applicable or not right now, it's a word that's applicable right now or not. It may not, the shoe may not fit today, but you best believe that shoe is going to come on and it's going to fit sooner or later. It's a guarantee because God, and, and I'm doing this because we've been dealing with so many things that have been challenging our faith. We've got to get back to the understanding of the roots of what our faith was. That's why last week I preached about the God of promises instead of the promises of God. If you're stuck on the promises, then you lose focus on the God that is the one that makes the promise to you. We've got to reaffirm what who we believe in and what we believe. We got to reaffirm who we believe and what we believe. Come on, James 2 and 17 says this. Even so, faith, if it hath not worked, is dead being alone. We talked about that this morning in Sunday school. So we must act upon what we hear. We must move upon what we hear. We must go by what we hear. And when, when, and when we're hearing, we've got to hear what, you all? We've got to hear the word of God. You've got to stop filling your heart up with mess that's on the news in the morning. You've got to stop allowing uh, what other people got to say about what's going on. Fill your heart. Fill your heart and your mind. Hear the word of God. Hear the promises of God. Hear what God is saying. And that way you'll be able to make it through while everybody else is drowning in 
in life and drowning in this world and drowning of things that's going on, I'm prospering. I'm moving forward because God told me that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The word of God tells me that I am the head and not the tail. So I'm standing on what God's word says about me. I'm standing on what God's word says about me. So I got to put my faith to work. And I got to put my actions into um, and believe in God into works. That means that when I lost my job in California, I didn't go and lose my head. I didn't go cuss everybody out and tear up the building. But what I did is I said, thank you. And I knew that God was going to make a way. When I moved all the way out here to Virginia and I was out here all by myself, I didn't have no place to go to. I only had enough money to last me for a week. But I walked by faith and not by sight. And lo and behold, God made a way that I was able to move into an apartment without having to put any money down. And then once I got here, I didn't have a car to drive in. But then God blessed me with a free car in two weeks. It takes some faith to be able to believe that you can go from one coast to the next coast without having assurance of where you're going to stay the next week. It requires you to take a walk of faith. It's not enough to say, God, I believe you. But what are you going to say when it's time to be challenged? When, you're time, when it's time to be tried. And so as we learn faith, that takes me to my next point, our faith will be tried. As we learn faith, we learn faith how? By hearing. I hear the word of God, and then I believe on what God's word has said to me. Look at these things. Difficulties and trials strengthen your faith. So if you don't want to go through any trials and tribulations, guess what? You all, your faith is not going to grow. You're going to still be stuck on milk every single day. You're still going to be stuck on little kibbles and bits, little bitty things that kids eat, the little snacks, fruit snacks. No, you've got to get a move from fruit snacks to some real meat. You've got to get to some real food, and that means that you have to go through some trials and some tribulations. You've got to understand that trials refine you. When you go through the fire, it brings out the best in you because those things that are weak and those things that are inconsequential have to fall off to offer you as you go through the fire. And the fire helps you to do what? It helps you to focus in on God. It helps you to keep your mind stayed on God. When things are all good and hunky-dory, you don't always see God in everything. But I'm learning that when I'm on the mountaintop, I got to look for God just as hard as, I, as I'm looking for God while I'm in the valley low. Uh, trials help you to focus in on God. It helps you to understand that God is the way that, that provides you for you. He is the one that makes a way. All right? So it, trials can Keep you attentive on God's will instead of your will. Go back with me. We're in the book of James. Let's go to James verses two, verse chapter one, verses two through four. James chapter one, verses two through four. He says, This my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. To get to the wanting nothing, guess what you got to go through? You've got to go through some trials. You've got to go through some heartache. You've got to go through some pain. You've got to go through some frustration. But as you work your way through the trials that come with life, then you'll be perfect and entire wanting nothing as you go through that process. I'm not still struggling with the things that I used to struggle on because I understood that God can bring me through. And as I've matured in Christ, and as I've matured in his word, and if I've taken time to study his word, it showed me that God can help me to overcome any obstacle that the enemy throws my way. Go with me to 1 Peter 1, 6 through 7. 1 Peter 1, 6 through 7. It says, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season. Everybody say, a season. If need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. That means that it's going to be some temptations, some seasons where you're going to have a whole bunch of temptations. And we can rejoice in it. Why can we rejoice in it? Verse 7 tells us why we can rejoice. He says that the trial or the trying of your faith being much more precious than that of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Come on, you all. After Jesus, uh, what did Jesus do? What did he do? Give me, give me, give me. After Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, 
The Bible says this. It says, and he was sent in the wilderness to be tested of the devil. The Bible specifically says that. That after he was acknowledged by God as his son, that he was, went, he was sent into the wilderness to be tried. That means that he was sent into the wilderness to be tested, to have to go through some heartache and some pain. And for 40 days and 40 nights, he fasted and still did those things that are right. And he did it all for the glory of God. The things that you are going through, the trials that you are going through, they're for God to get the glory out of your life. They're there for God to get the glory. It reminds me of Romans 8 and 18. It says, for the suffering of this present time cannot be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. Yes, you may be going through something for a season, but it cannot be compared to what God has in store for you. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. And I'm almost done. I'm, I'm trying to help you build a stronger faith. Hebrews 10 and 23 says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. That's how I begin to grow my faith. Then as I grow my faith by hearing and believing in Christ, then I understand that faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But as I go through my life and, and, and the trials and circumstances, I learn that I can't walk by sight, but I have to walk solely by faith because what I'm seeing is something that's going to try to deceive me and stop me from believing what I actually heard and what I actually know is true. And so when my faith is tested and my faith is tried, I can understand that if I keep holding on without wavering, I can do that because God is faithful to his word. God is faithful to his word. And I got more to here I need to read. Uh, what do I have here? 23, 23, 23. Go to 24. It says, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. We're living in a day and time where we need one another. We need each other to exhort one another, to encourage one another, to help each other's faith to stay strong, because if we stand by ourselves, then we're being attacked by the enemy on our own. But when I got a brother, when I got a sister, say, Pastor, I got you. Brother, I got you sister I got you and I'm praying for you that just reminds me that I'm not in this fight on my own but I got someone that's willing to go through the fight with me I got someone on my side that's praying for me I've got someone on my side that's going through the same difficulties and struggles but we still have hope because we believe that God will bring us through go back with me to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 and I'm almost done Faith believes or pleases God and protects us from the enemy. Verse 6 in Hebrews 11, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. So it takes faith to please God. And what is that faith is? That faith can be the size of a mustard seed. But God just wants us to have some faith. But you all need to understand that little faith yields what? Little power. But much faith yields much power because the more I believe God, the more God can do and work on my behalf. If I believe that God can't heal from a sickness, then why would I? Why would God heal you of cancer? If I can't believe that God can't give me food on my table, or why would I? You, you got to believe. You got to believe what you what the Word of God says. I don't want you all to go here leave and talk about if I declare it, it's going to be that. No, what you got to declare is the Word of God. We ain't talking about no prosperity ministry. We're talking about believing and standing on the promises of God. And I believe what God has said to me. And I believe what God has spoken into my life. And I believe what God has spoken into his word. And so that's what I'm going to stand upon. And that's what I'm going to believe in. So without faith, it's impossible to please God. I can't, be, I can't please God if I don't believe that he alone is God. And that he alone cannot fail. The last but not least, go with me to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. I said here that faith gives us the ability to please God, but our faith is also what protects us from the enemy. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. This is where it tells us to put on the whole armor of God. But after the end of putting on the whole armor of God, it takes us back to what we need to be a sustained 
when the enemy tries to come and attack us. Uh, Ephesians 6 and 16, it says this, above all, taking the shield of faith. That means your faith is, you know what, devil, you may be trying, but I believe God. Yes, devil, I may be sick in my body, but I believe God. Yes, I may have lack in, around me, but I still believe God. Your faith will actually repel the devil from trying to talk to you and put more foolishness on you. You got to speak the word of God to the devil. And when you speak the word of God to the devil and stand, the Bible says you can resist the devil and he will flee. You can't do that in your own power and you can't do that on your own might. I have this quote for you that I'm going, going to get up out of here. It, I have this quote. It says, faith sees the invisible. This was in my bathroom. I walked into the bathroom last night, and, and we got a little picture frame with faith. It says, faith sees the invisible, believes the incredible, and receives the impossible. Faith sees the invisible. It believes the incredible and receives the impossible. And then when I went walking this morning, every time I go walking on Sunday morning now, God gives me little different things. In a song by Kirk Franklin, is he made this statement. He said, faith is not believing what God will do. Hear me. Faith is not believing what God will do, but faith is believing that it's already done. Not waiting to see that it's done, but believing that it's already done. So I've come to this conclusion. Instead of believing what I see, I'm going to believe what I know. And the world will always try to give us a report that the things of the world is so uh, in such disarray, in, in such calamity. But I don't know about you all. I've decided that I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. And the report of the Lord tells me that God is great, that God can do anything but fail. So that means that I've got to refuse to believe that sickness is greater than my God. I've got to refuse to believe that depression is greater than my God. I've got to believe, I, I refuse to believe that lack, fear, heartache, pain, man itself is bigger than the God that we serve. So my faith tells me that God is greater Though I may be going through a storm, though I may be going through situations in my life, God is still greater than the situation that I'm going through. And I can hold fast to the profession of my faith. God will do what he said that he would do. God will hold true to his word. God will never leave you nor ever forsake you. God will be with you unto the end of the world. God will stop the weapons that form against you and won't allow them to prosper. That don't mean that they won't form, but they won't prosper. You're going to see the weapons form. You may even see the weapons shoot your way, but it won't harm you. It won't destroy you because God said it cannot prosper. No matter what man's word may have said, it doesn't matter what, mer what word man is trying to place into your heart, I mean your life, you are what God said you are. God said that you are a royal priesthood. God said that you are a chosen generation. God says you are uh, heirs, joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Jesus, you've got to believe what the word of God says. Our faith comes by hearing, and we've got to hear the word of God. That means we've got to have a hunger and a thirst for righteousness. That means we've got to seek God first in his kingdom and his righteousness. That means that God will add all the things that he said that we add unto us. He won't withhold any good thing from us because we belong to him, and he is a promise keeper, and God is true to his word. I want to encourage you today. Let's build a stronger faith. Don't walk by what you see, by walk, but walk by faith. Faith cometh by hearing, taking time to hear the word of God, making him your priority, making him your focus, making him the first so that he can do what he said that he's going to do. Since he's begun the good work in you, he's able to perform the work in you. He's able to complete the work in you, and he's able to bring you through. Resting on your feet in the house of the Lord, building stronger faith. Every head bowed and every eye is closed. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We've been going through some trials in 2020. We're eight months in, and it seems like 
I don't know about you. I wish that 2020 was done and we can get into a new year. But God is not done yet. <laughs> and in spite of the heartache, in spite of the pain, in spite of the frustration, in spite of the losses, God has still remained faithful to his word. And if you all take time to look and remember God called us to soar in 2020. We have not gone through the things that everybody else has gone through, but we've gone through a different way. We've been building houses, building businesses, starting new projects, getting new leases on life, being healed from different sicknesses and disease. And God is not through with us yet, but we've got to hold on to our most holy faith. You can't give up. You can't throw in the towel. You can't become weary in well-doing. You've got to stop walking by what you see instead of walk by faith. That means that sometimes you're going to have to take a step of faith not knowing where your next step is going to lead you. But if the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and you trust that God is going to order your footsteps, he's not going to allow you to be set up in a trap. He's not going to allow the enemy to be more against you than the people that are for you. God will work it all together for your good. You just got to hold on to your most holy faith. Don't let go. Don't let go. Father, I thank you for reaffirming your word in us on today. It was a word that we've heard before, God, but you just wanted it to be remind us to be reminded that we've got to hold on to our belief in you. God, we don't have to waver in our faith in you because you are a God that does not waver. Every word that is proceeded out of your mouth, it shall come to pass. We may not have seen it. We may not have heard it yet, but it shall come to pass. That's why the hall of faith is the hall of faith, because they believed you according to your word. Help us to stand on your word. Help us to stand on your promises. Help us to hold on to you, God, even in the spite of trials and tribulations that are raging in the land. Help us to hold on to you, God, because you never fail and you're not like man that you should lie nor the son of man that you should repent. But God, if we wavered, God, help reaffirm our faith. Help rebuild our faith. Help strengthen our faith even now, God, in the name of Jesus. So, God, we're hearing the word. God, help us to hold on to your word. Help us to hold on to your promises. Help us to hold on to you. Let us be like Jacob and not let you go until you bless us. Let us be like David and encourage ourselves when everybody else is there to try to kill us. Let us be like Jesus, God, in the name of Jesus. Let us be like Jesus and declare not our wills, but let thine will be done. Let us be like Enoch, God, so that we can walk with you, God, and you would be pleased with us. Let us be like Abel. Let us be like Abram. Let us be like Sarai. Let us be like the whole of the, those that are on the hall of faith, God, so that we would please you. Not having to have the assurance of the promise in our hands, but trusting you, God, that you will bring it to pass. I speak healing. I speak favor. I speak abundance, God, in the name of Jesus. I speak life even now, God. Yes, in the name of Jesus. I bind lack even now, God, in the name of Jesus. It's not our lot, God. I speak your word according to what your word declares. God, I speak leaders, God. I speak growth even now. I speak protection over our children, God, even now in the name of Jesus. I speak salvation to those that are lost. I speak protection, God, for those that are in dangerous places. God, I speak life. In the name of Jesus, because you came that we might have life and have life that more abundantly. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. It's in the mighty and master's name of Jesus Christ we pray. We say thank God, amen, and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For those that are tuning into our stream, if you don't know Jesus in the part of your sin, I gave you the blueprint at the beginning. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised, that God raised Jesus from the dead, you can be saved today. 
It's with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and it's with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That if you would confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus and believe your heart that God has raised him from the dead, then we go, I went back. For whosoever, there we go, 10 and 13, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be saved today if you would just repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me now. God, save me from my sin, save me from my shame, save me from my old ways, and come into my heart and save me now. God, I trust you that you are Lord and that you are king, and I want you to be king over the heart of my life and the heart of my soul. Come into my heart and save me now. And thank you for giving me a second chance. I believe that you alone are God. And I believe that you can. And I believe that you will turn my life around. And that you'll work all things together for my good. Help me to be more like you. Help me to reflect your image, God. And help me to give you glory and honor and praise. I thank you for salvation. I thank you for coming into my heart and saving me. And I thank you for a second chance. It's in Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. We say thank God, amen, and amen. And if you repeated that prayer to me, I believe that you are now a part of the household of faith. And now you got to work your faith. You got to work your faith by being able to hear the word of God. Your faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. That's what's going to strengthen you and that's what's going to empower you to do great things. I want to encourage you to attach yourself, align yourself with a Bible-believing church. If you're in the Northern Virginia area, you can join us at 17948 Fraley Boulevard in the town of Dumfries, Virginia. Come worship with us here at Pray Center Church of God in Christ. It's now time for us to be a blessing to the house of the Lord. For the Bible declares that God loves a cheerful giver. Liberal souls shall be made fat. Tells us in the New Testament to give and it shall be given unto you. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. In this age of technology, we have several methods that you can give electronically. If you want to give online, you can give via Cash App by going to Dollar Pray Center VA. Pray Center VA, that's our Cash App. Or you can go to our website. We don't need that. We can go to our Cash App. And you can, I mean, sorry, go to our website and you can give via Giveify by clicking, clicking on the giving link. God loves our cheerful giving and liberal souls should be made fat. If you have gifts in the house of the Lord, you can bring them now and you can place them on the pulpit, on the altar, and we'll go from there. Come on, give me a song. Thank you for being willing to give and thank you for being willing to sow seeds into the life of this church here at Praise Center Church of God in Christ. We believe that God is blessing us and God is doing great things in our midst because even in the midst of a pandemic, God is still doing great things that blow our minds. No jobs lost, no homes lost, new cars, new favor, new life is even coming. And that's because we continue to sow the seeds that God has called for us to sow. And so, God, we thank you for the gifts. And we thank you for the givers. We pray that you would bless their seeds, press it down, shake it together, and allow it to run over in the name of Jesus. Allow it to run over that men would give to our bosom. And according to your word, the same measure that we meet, it shall be met back unto us again. No lack is mine because I trust in the God of my salvation. This is my seed. And because it's the seed, it's too small to be my harvest. And because my harvest is going to be greater than my seed, God, I believe that you will never allow me to go into lack. Lack will not be mine. Favor is mine because you're going to press my seed down, shake it together, and make it to run over. I thank you in advance for your blessings, and I thank you for your promises. It's in Jesus' mighty and master's name we pray. We say thank God, amen, and amen. Amen.